Welcome back, guys. Uh, today, I thought I'd take a look at two of the top Debian distributions. Uh, one being Sparky Linux, which is what you see here, and then I'm going to also take a look at MX Linux. <clears throat> now, those two, in my opinion, those are probably the top two Debian distributions um, is in terms of functionality and popularity. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to review some of the uh, proprietary items that uh, Sparky Linux uses and then follow that up, and I'll show you the same within MX Linux. Now, they're both based on Debian Stable. This is the latest Sparky Linux release for uh, 4.9. If we go to about Sparky Linux, you can see it's the Sparky 49, 4.9.08, AMD 64 kernel. Um, so far, I have it set up the way I usually set it up, and I've also installed NVIDIA drivers and Broadcom drivers, and I didn't have any issues, but I'm going to review that with you step by step. So let's go to the first proprietary uh, menu that uh, Sparky provides for you, and that is Sparky Center LXDE. Now, <clears throat> most of your configuration options are located within this Sparky Center. And uh, the Compton Manager is basically your compositing manager. You've got customized look and feel, uh, open box configuration, screen saver. Now you've got <clears throat> default applications for LX session. Now Sparky does use LXDE. It doesn't look like that functions within this Sparky Center. Okay. Well, it's kind of strange that that wouldn't be installed out of the box. Let's see if we can get it now. So as you can see, this is what you would need to do in order to activate that, and that's where your auto start is. Anything that you are going to start when you boot or log out, log back in, will be done in this auto start. You will have to install default applications for LX session because it is not included out of the box, which is rather strange, <clears throat> being an LXDE desktop. So we're going to close that out and move on. You have Java, Preferred Applications, Session Manager, X uh, uh, Terminal, Window Manager, Text Editor on Disk, CF disk, disk manager, disk usage. These are all your hardware options. Uh, I have a brother printer and it does need to be configured manually. Uh, apt, I'm going to go over apt us. Synaptic is where your repos are. And you can generate a system upgrade by clicking the system upgrade icon. Uh, it's got a firewall manager. Root Terminal, Task Manager, Live USB Creator. So it does have quite a lot of options as far as uh, configuration utilities. This is where you would add users to a group. And then you have Flash Player, Ice-T Web Control Panel, Open JDK Java, Virtual Keyboard. So that's what you get in Sparky Center. Okay, let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at apt US. <clears throat> Here is where you can install additional packages. So you can upgrade your system. Um, here in accessories, fix broken packages. Now I didn't test all of these, but these are all provided for you. For codecs, um, each of these individual codecs, some of them are installed out of the box, some of them are not. You'd have to click on each one. I went ahead and installed the ones that were not installed out of the box <clears throat> just to make sure everything for gaming worked. Then you've got audio. Now this is a variety of various music and audio applications that you could install. Same thing with video different desktop environments. I did not try installing any of these because I do prefer the LXDE. Gaming, including Steam, Play on Linux, Wine, you can install any of those. 
those are your office applications, graphics, web, various browsers, messaging applications, email, RSS reader applications, file transfer, <coughs> security, firewall builder, GUFW. I, when I, I did go ahead and install GUFW. And then system. These are backup, various system utilities, live USB creator. You can install a Sparky kernel, uh, NVIDIA settings. This is where I had to install my NVIDIA drivers from. Now, if you double click that, it'll take you through the installation fairly easily. Um, there was nothing for Broadcom, so I had to install that at the command line. So that gives you a pretty good uh, feel for what Sparky provides in the way of proprietary utilities. They've got pretty much all the bases covered. Uh, I l do like Sparky. Uh, it usually runs extremely stable. They do have a testing version, which I have uh, tried <coughs> now and again, but I do prefer the stable version. Now there's an upgrade utility which is this icon in the panel and it will take you through the upgrade process to see if there are any upgrades available and it, my system is up to date so I will just click OK. It seems that they've combined apt US and apt US extra I think it was called and the apt US Extra was really the software center where you could install various software packages. So they've seems that they've combined the two utilities into one, and that's called apt US. Now there are multiple other utilities provided, such as BleachBit, and, uh, System Upgrade, System Profiler, Time Shift. USB disk formatter, those are already included out of the box. So that is it for Sparky. And now we're going to move over to MX Linux. Be right back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back now in MX Linux. Now I'm going to uh, basically review it the same way that I did Sparky. Um, first thing about MX is that they do have a user manual built into the menu which is helpful for new users. There's lots of information there and uh, a good reference tool. Now, if you go through the menu, you'll find a lot of um, proprietary utilities under MX. So you can see all of the various utilities that are listed. Now, the Codex installer, for example, <clears throat> is a little bit different from the Sparky. In this one, uh, basically you click OK, it's going to download all of the various codecs and install them. So you don't have to do them individually. It does the install, the download and the install as a group for you, which is nice. So I've already done that, I'm going to X out of that. So to simplify this, um, and I don't want to oversimplify because it's a pretty impressive what MX has done with this distribution. However, going through and looking at all of the various utilities is helpful, but they're all grouped for you basically within three packages. And I've got those listed in my doc. You can see MX Tools, MX Package Installer, and MX Tweak. MX Tweak gives you the option to change your panel, your theme, tweak your compositor, uh, your login screen, enable single click on the desktop. So lots of things that can be configured within MX Tweak. Panel, window manager, appearance. Very, very helpful. Very easy to use. MX Package Installer is similar to the Sparky uh, app to US. However, <clears throat> it's all done in Q 
categories. If you open a category, you can select any of the various packages to download and install. Now, if it's grayed out, that means it's already installed. You don't have to do one at a time. You can check off the audio packages, close that, and then open the browser packages. So you can go through every category, pick the ones you want, and then click install, and it'll take care of them for you all at once. Now, you can see your stable repo, test repo, Debian backports, flat packs, pretty much everything is taken care of for you. Lots of information here and lots of packages to choose from. And as you know, flat packs uh, are, is another way to install uh, applications into your system. So this is very, very well done, very easy to use. And the last one is MX Tools. Now MX Tools is basically taking all of the individual listings from the menu and putting them into one central location. So you can see that the live USB maker, snapshot, boot repair, cleanup, they're all there for you. I use the Codex installer. Um, I use the NVIDIA driver installer. Now, when I used the driver installer, it worked fine, no problems at all. But not only that, my Broadcom drivers were installed out of the box. MX is one of the few Linux distributions that does the uh, Broadcom install right out of the box for you. <clears throat> so there's no need to go through any type of installation on your Broadcom. At least I, I don't, I haven't had to. Uh, so your mileage may vary, but uh, I, would, I would, if you have Broadcom, just install MX Linux and then check to see if your Broadcom drivers are installed. Most times they are. Now the installation is a little bit different than um, Sparky, although both of them I would say um, would be able to be done by a new user who's computer savvy. If it's somebody who really isn't uh, knowledgeable about computers and the logic and the intuitive uh, nature, then they might have some issues. But uh, with a little bit of hand-holding, either of, of these distributions could be installed without any issues. Now, MX Linux also gives you the option to, to create a live USB, so you can run your system right off a live USB. Uh, all of the utilities that I checked, and I did check most of them, they work fine out of the box, no issues whatsoever. So. MX Linux. Now, if you take a look at DistroWatch, uh, if you go back about a year, I guess, MX was somewhere around where uh, Sparky is, around 25 or so, if I remember correctly. And over the last year, MX has done so much work to provide a user-friendly experience that they've, uh, they've risen all the way to number four. And there is a good reason for that. They have put a ton of effort into making this distribution one of the best. Now, in my opinion, these are the two best Debian distributions, MX Linux and Sparky. I, <clears throat> if you were going to run a uh, plain vanilla Debian, of course, it would take a little bit more work, uh, lots of manual uh, intervention to get it running properly. However, uh, I do enjoy running plain vanilla Debian. But if I were a new user and I wanted to run Debian, there's no better distribution than MX Linux. If I had to pick one of the two, I would pick MX Linux number one, Sparky Linux number two. You really can't go wrong with either, although I do believe MX makes it easier to get things done. They've provided so many tools that um, your daily computing experience is going to be, in my opinion, a little bit easier with MX Linux. So guys, that is uh, it for this video. Thank you very much for stopping by the channel today. 
please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.